Thomas here with Much Props, gonna give you another how-to video. Today, I am once again working on my Viking Link cosplay. Last week, I built the cloak and it kinda got me re-energized in the whole mashup, and I thought, why not knock out another one while I was at it? So today, we are going to build a battle horn. You know, the doo-doo-doo, things they used to blow to warn other people or start a battle or those type of stuff. I bought a like horn online that I'm going to use as the base. Then I'm going to do some mods to it, do some scrimshawing, add a Mulgara head to the opening at the end, uh, and probably carve some runes and make, I don't know, like a little handle or something. So today we're going to make a Viking battle horn with a Mulgara motif. Sure. Let's get to building. I wasn't exactly sure how to begin tackling this build, so I procrastinated it for the past couple of months. I bought this basically when I bought my drinking horn and have just been putting it off. The idea was in my head and it was like the opening of the horn would be the Mulgara head again, but as far as materials and processes, I wasn't sure. I knew clay or resin would be too heavy, foam just seemed wrong, and after watching a Kami cosplay video, it hit me that Warbler would be a good option. So I started by building up the basic shapes out of aluminum, or as my British friends would say, aluminium. To tape it down, I used metal ductwork tape. Once I got the shape where I wanted to, I made sure to tape it securely to the base. And in the next scene, I'm going to smash thermoplastic all over this thing. Cosplay Flex is the generic brand of Warbla that my local hobby store carries. It's not cheap, but sometimes you can catch it on sale. I got mine this past week for like 35% off the sticker price, which was like, uh, yes. This stuff is a thermoplastic with sawdust mixed into it. It's easy to sculpt, sand, and rework. The scraps are usable for other areas, create a super rigid prop that can be pretty thin, and you can cut it with scissors. I heat up the plastic on both sides and then mash it over the foil. Seams can be blended in with sculpting tools and more heat. A quick sanding of the surface can then bring it to a relatively smooth surface. And it smells like wood and not burnt plastic.
Once I have the base sculpt covered in, it is time to put on the details. Mulgara has a tooth ridge mouth that I'm gonna add. I like to cut the thermoplastic into strips, heat them up quickly, and then roll them into snakes or little balls to do the sculpting with. I will say this about the material. If you have heat sensitivity, it can be relatively difficult to work with because it has to be hot. My hands are pretty used to the 190 degrees or so that it takes to make pliable, but after a couple of hours, it does wear you out. Take frequent breaks and work in patches. It adheres really well to itself with just a little heating. After you have the parts joined, you can blend the seams with your finger or a sculpting tool. Here I am taping off the section I want to place my runes on. If you didn't watch the drinking horn video, you should definitely go back and watch it after this one. That was my first go at carving horns or scrimshawing. The tape gives me a visual of the band without making any markings on my horn. Once I like the shape, I mark it with a sharpie, take the tape off, and then carve. I have a diamond tipped thin cylinder bit on my rotary tool. It is the width of how wide I want my grooves to be. I slowly carve an initial line with the corner of the bit, then I switch to the side of the bit and drag it into that groove. You have to go really slow and keep in mind how thick your material is. On a horn, it's relatively difficult because it's a complex shape. Make sure to wear a respirator with a face shield and work in a well-ventilated area because these particles go everywhere and you don't want them in your eyes or your lungs, and there's a not so great odor that comes along with cutting horn. After I have the lines etched in, I draw my runes on and use the same basic method to carve them in. They just take a lot longer because they're more intricate in shape. Now I'm roughing up the surface to get it ready for gilding. I take a 220 grit sandpaper and scuff up the inside of my lines. You may wonder what the runes say. The runes are size devised to represent the sounds of a language and in no way are a substitute for English letters. That being said, I'm using them to substitute as letters. I picked a passage from the Saga of Volsungs, a 13th century poet's rendition of the historic elder Ida. The quote says, Fear not death, for the hour of your doom is set and none may escape it. I thought that was a pretty articulate thing to place on an object that basically was used to signal the attack of one's enemies leading into death on both sides.
Initially, I thought I would make a similar leather holder for the horn like I did for my drinking horn, but due to the shape and the fact that it would be covering up my runes, I decided instead to add a clasp at the end. Ideally, this would be screwed on the inside of the horn, but I wasn't able to do that with the mouthpiece already mounted. So I'm going to wing this. Here is my thought process. I figured the thermoplastic was strong enough to hold the screw, but I wanted to give some extra reinforcement so it couldn't slide around or easily pull through as this is going to be dangling from my belt when not in my hand. I bored a hole into the horn sneaking up on it to make a snug fit on the screw head then super glued it into the recess. With that in place I wrapped several layers of thermoplastic around it and made a decorative band. Fingers crossed it will hold. I spray painted all the thermoplastic areas with some black spray paint. Now time for gilding. Don't get me wrong, I love the way gilding looks on a piece. It really makes it feel substantial and has a sheen that I've never been able to achieve with spray paint. You put on the gilding adhesive, which is also called sizing. It works like contact cement in that you layer it down and wait for it to dry. Once it's clear, then I can lay down the sheets of faux gold. I bought a massive pack on Amazon with several hundred sheets of six different colors for like 15 bucks, I think. It was pretty cheap for the fake stuff. Once you have covered all the glue with the sheets, knock off the excess with a brush. You can use the flakes to patch up spots where you need to. It is extremely satisfying to see, but also shoots gold particulates everywhere, basically making your workspace and you look like a glitter explosion. You won't regret the results, but you may regret the cleanup. After all my surfaces are covered, I cover the entire golded areas with a couple of coats of gilding varnish to protect it. To carry over the paint theme of my drinking horn, I am using this blue iridescent plaid effects paint. It has a nice subtle color shift that makes these grooves seem like they're glowing. Now it is just a tedious task of taking a small brush with unsteady hands and a camera in your way to get a nice shot for you to see. I'm really happy with the way this clip turned out, but that camera sometimes makes it very difficult to do a simple task. The grooves were not deep enough to just cover everything and wipe off the high points. I painted all the grooves and then kept a cotton swab or some paper towels close by to quickly sop up any overpainted areas.
For the strap, I decided to braid a couple of different materials and colors together to give it some interest. I have some faux braided leather cord and suede strips here that I'm going to do a simple braid with. I taped three strips together and wove them back and forth in and out with each other. I made two 24 inch long strands. I don't know if I will stay with this strapping, but it was what I came up with in the moment as time was running out on this build video. I might change it out later for a laser engraved thicker strap of leather. I don't know. Let me know in the comments what you think about it. The strapping is just enough to fit my wrist through while I am holding it, and long enough to loop it into my warrior belt when I'm not holding it. I feed it through the loop and secure it with random weaving and knots tying on the end. I incorporate a couple of these metal viking beads, which I think are intended for hair beading. They have runes, animal heads, and coil designs in them, I just thought they looked cool. This was another one of those random things I stumbled upon while scrolling through through Amazon online. With that capping off the strapping, I am done and one step closer to a finished Viking Link mashup. I have one more build planned and then I should be ready to hit up my photographer friend Julie to get some epic pictures taken. And we are finished. Here is the end result. I am super happy with the way this thing turned out. I've been procrastinating this build for quite a while. I actually bought this horn when I made the drinking horn and was kind of intimidated and scared to try and figure out how I was gonna piece together everything, what materials needed to be where, how I was gonna hold things together. And it just kind of goes to show you that you have to learn from experiences. You have to learn from mistakes. You can't be afraid to start a project and, and mess it up. Um, that's part of the process. It's part of you learning. And you're going to learn way more from that, from your mistakes, than you would ever watching 10,000 videos on YouTube. Now, I'm not saying don't watch my videos, but like, don't be afraid to dive in. Um, sometimes head first and make big mistakes. Make it full speed. That's what my coaches always used to tell me. If you're going to make a mistake go full speed. Uh, so yeah, maybe you will try and make one of these Viking horns yourselves and impress your friends with your ability to mash things up that don't go together, but somehow continue to keep working. Yeah. Maybe you'll get some. Yay! And inevitably they're going to ask you, how'd you make that? You can give them one of these, tell them much props. Now, I'm, I'm going to have to practice my Viking horn blowing skills, but uh, here we go. Peace out. If you enjoy what I do here on YouTube and want to see more builds like this one, please consider joining these awesome people listed here with me over on my Patreon to build a bigger, better, more creative community together.